that has made my being in Canada worldwide, listening to everybody that has spoken today. Thank you so much for, you know, teaching me things. Um, though we think we are preparing the platform for some people, but directly or indirectly, you're also equipping yourself. And that is just what has just happened. You have had dead value to me this morning, listening to you all. And thank you and for all the participants that are here, the young ones there, I'm really, really happy for you because I know you are going to, you know, reproduce some of these things, even in a greater measure as time, you know, goes on. Now, the last topic for the day is um, recognizing and maximizing opportunities, yet maintaining identity. I appreciate um, uh, Shope for really, really, you know, dealing with that um, identity issue when talking. So um, I think also um, Francis, you know, Mrs. Francis did same, Mr. Agbenga did same, almost everybody. It's like we have same line of thought towards our theme, which I'm probably going to recap well at the end of the presentation. So with that, I won't want to be talking, I mean, <laughs> I'm a good talker. So please let me confine myself to my to my um, slides as much as possible. So I'll just read them out and probably bring in one thing or the other where necessary. Now, when we talk of opportunities, one thing that we need to know, particularly the younger generation, just like adults are not also left out, is you need to know what is opportunity. Discovering opportunities is very important. Some things would show up to us and would think they are opportunities. They may, they may not. Some things will show up to us and we feel they are nothing. They may be opportunities, they may not. So we need to know what it means to discover opportunities. So in discovering opportunities, what are the key things we need to really pay attention to? One, read widely. Thank God for Tommy, she was a reader. Readers are thinkers and they make effect in their time and their generation. And nobody wants to be a nobody. Actually, nobody wants to be a nobody. It's just that it happens that it ends up being a nobody. So for not to be a nobody, you need to know what it means to be somebody. And being somebody starts from you giving yourself to valuable, you know, um, um, issues. Not just re releasing yourself to anything that comes your way. Read widely and deeply. When you are reading, know why you are reading and what you are reading. Read a lot about as many subjects as you can. Don't be an, oh, I don't know, you are under, you are just like good at nothing. That will not take you anywhere. It will not take me anywhere. You should be good and sound at a particular thing and you are like a specialist in that thing, but in almost every other thing, try and have a say. Two, try to decipher the connection between things that happen. That was what, you know, Enoch was trying to tell us. Things don't just happen by chance. Watch out for connections. One thing will happen because of one thing and it will lead to one thing and it will go on and it will go on. Look at the testimony of Tommy. You're managing relationship, keeping relationship and identifying the what in a person. You know, help her to connect with that guy. And today, the rest is story. The rest is, you know, testimony. Try to decipher connections between things. And when things happen, don't just look at things as they are just happening by chance. Then the third one, take time to understand why the world works the way it does. You don't hold the world. You can't predict the world. You can't say you know everything about the world. Be patient enough to know what the world 
is actually offering what makes up the world. What is the world all about? What happened to the people of the past? How is that connected to what is happening now? And how will it affect what will happen in the future? Don't be a blank thinker. Try and connect things. Then the last one, make use of the internet to all that you can about everything that you can. Internet to all you can about everything that you can that will move you forward. Don't be a robot that because there is an invention, that invention is not given to your own, um, to your own destiny. Like Enoch said, use all these tools, use technology, don't let them use you. The issue with that generation, even some adults are not excusable. We allow technology to use us. Internet is there for good. There is nothing you cannot use internet for. Use it positively. Don't be carried away. You know, time is precious. You wake up, you have just 24 hours to manage. And you invest the 24 hours on another person's investment. Then what becomes of you? So when you are using internet, you are using technology, you are using social media, use it positively to achieve purpose. There are times you stumble on some things and you just laugh over them, but don't let that take all your day. On this internet of a thing, social media and technology, there is something, two things I want you to discover. One, some people took their time to invent on that thing. It is a discovery by a set of people that you and I know, if you have to be mentioning their Facebook, you know, um, um, Microsoft Word and, and, and the like. Some people took their time to invest and it becomes a source of income for them today. And it becomes a source of fame, a source of popularity to them. And then they are getting their cool money and they're making life and they're building, you know, treasures and wealth for their generations yet unborn. But how do they do that? They do that. It's not as if they cannot do it still positively, but they do that with your own unconscious carelessness of managing your own talent and your own destiny. They invented this thing for a purpose, a good purpose probably, but it has been so much, you know, abused that it cannot take your own 24 hours. And then inventing, you are not investing your time. You are wasting your time for another person to make wet. Because the more you waste your time on those things, the more you know wet they are having. So which wet do you want to be left with if you don't manage your own time? Internet should be used constructively. I realize there is nothing you want to search, you want to know that you cannot at least have a bit of, you know, an idea of it through internet, able to the scripture, to the Bible, to your faith. I, there was a time I was like, you just, just click it and say scripture. Scripture fulfilling destiny. It will bring down lots of things for you scripturally, and then you will be saying the Bible references about fulfilling destiny. Scripture, good successes, future, and scripture, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Scripture, skills. For, it will bring down lots of Bible, you know, lots of, that is in line with this Christian faith. And it, is, it can be applicable to all other channels, all other faith, all other. Look for something that will move your life forward, you know, using internet. Not just wasting time on something that some people are thoughtless about before they dump on internet and then you are carried away with that. And that becomes like, you know, Eating into your destiny, taking your time. Time is precious. Time is money. If you don't use it well now, it will count in the future. Seriously, it will count in the future. So let's quickly move on. That's discovering opportunities. Now recognizing opportunities. How do you recognize opportunities? Let's even, like some of us immigrants or international students, even adults, immigrants, there are opportunities in the Western world. Why? Because they are very thoughtful. They don't believe in mortgaging people's destiny in a conspicuous way that will render them useless. Even if they are going to do it, they will do it subtly, 
in such a way that you they, they are using you you don't know because you are actually because they will they will put some baits that will attract you and give you a sense of you know being a human being before you can now give your totality to whatever it is that they want to take from you immigrant opportunities are here and there okay you can work well in school you can earn good money you, you have job you know a, a, a job is available if you want to pick it morning night day. i mean you have flexible time to pick up a job and get good money you can go to school you know with government money with any opportunity and they are funding opportunities here and there you have opportunity to make friends you know probably friends that you have not been making in your home country or friends that probably you you, you feel oh when i was being brought up some of us like i've been writing said were born here and probably in the course of your parents, immigrant parents, not turning you, taking care of you, don't have so much opportunity to make friends, and you now have liberty to go to school. You feel this is an opportunity for me to make friends. Opportunity of being a custodian and being in control of your own time. Opportunity of having independent life and making decisions as you wish. Particularly from 18 years, you are considered like an adult. You know, an adult is like you feel. The word is, it's my choice. I have the right. It's my choice. I have the right. Choice in which respect? In terms of I can make money. I can use money anyhow. I can use it based on what I feel. I can make friends. I can go out with my friends. I can hang out with my friends. I can play with my phone. Technology. I can sleep with my laptop 24 hours in my room. I can sleep with my phone. These are all choices. It's my choice. It's my right. Oh, fashion, trend, vogue. I can dress the way I like. I can, you know, I can decide to be naked. I can decide to be loud. I can decide to be noisy. I can decide. It's a choice. Particularly from Haiti. Land of, these are opportunities. Opportunities to, 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 to tow a line of fashion. Opportunity to, you know, key into trend. Opportunity to key into what is in vogue. Opportunity of career choice, vocation pursuits and the like opportunity of education you have them but in all of these choices and the right that we've all got there is something that should stand out in our hearts what of our ambassadorial responsibilities what about our ambassadorial responsibilities ambassadorial responsibilities you represent yourself you represent a background you represent a world you represent a generation you, you don't have to live a life of another person but you have you may you may it is very important for us to live a life of responsibility a life of accountability those that we are making reference to today as having been so great in flame, having influenced us or something it is because they 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 had their life on high esteem they felt they where or they should be accountable to people to something what of your ambassadorial responsibilities you are coming from a faith you have responsibility of being your own people person ambassador how are you representing yourself what is your ambassadorial challenge of your person what is the ambassadorial um, take of your person you are coming from a you, you you didn't just jump from the sky if that family is not there you won't be boasting of whatever you want to boast of today so you can't say my family is not there i have my life to live it's my choice it's my right no because what goes around comes around very soon you're also going to raise the family everybody family is a is a it is 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 something that is like not there. you just have to be gone to a family either family in the world or family in the home or family you need you know there is need for you just have to be noted for you to even see yourself as a human being if you belong nowhere then who are you ambassadorial responsibility we are not saying you should live or you should replicate the exact family that you are coming from but you have a bit of them to project well so you know your choices you know your right you know your choices you know your right whatever you do today it's coming back life is not lived in isolation and it's not lived like oh my own life is different from the from every other person's life 
the adults that we are feeling or the ones that we are feeling are not there for us today. One day you also come, you will, you will find yourself in that in that stage. What will you expect of the generation that you are breeding? Your ambassadorial responsibilities in your choice, in your rights. Ambassadorial responsibility to your background faith, to even you yourself and even your family. Let's go on. Then, when you recognize opportunity, how do you maximize opportunity? Some of us have said some of these things, and I'm really, really proud of that. So I won't really waste so much on humility. You have to be humble. Being humble does not mean you are a moron or you don't know what you're doing. It's only paving way to greatness for you. Being respectful, being humble, it's a virtue. And anything called virtue has a good end. Humility can help you develop more fully and enjoy richer relationship with others, just like Tommy told us, just like Shopper told us, as well as create opportunity and hang your respect. Keep a nurture relationship and humbly maintain relationship that makes your involvement in it respect reciprocal. If you're in any relationship that reciprocates your respect that you have for that kind of a relationship, then keep it. Be strategic, be proactive about connecting with peers. <laughs> Change your status quo. One thing which you all realize is that, you know, your peers are also you. So if you are seeking opinion, you are seeking advice that are bigger than your age from your peer, how will you get the best? You can only give what you have. And that is why you need to have a mentor. Somebody you can respect. Somebody you can share your idea with. With their weight of knowledge, your mentor will guide you right. You will get to speed faster and have a shortened learning curve. Then if you live a life of I don't have mentor, I don't have anybody I respect, I don't have anybody I, 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 I don't give a damn. Ah, that is willingly digging one's own grave. Then you need to choose your mentor with what? With care. You have to be versatile, you have to know what you want. And you have to be able to identify what you want in that mentor before you identify with such a person. Use your background to your advantage. Don't say, ah, thank God I'm out of Nigeria. Ah, thank God I'm out of Africa. So you are now unguarded. That's dangerous. Anybody, it is the nature of animals to be unguarded or to stray, not the nature of man. But when you put on the nature of, <laughs> I don't want to use that language, you just have to be on guard. You just, you just have to be on guard. Use your qualities and trade to demonstrate your transferable skills and experience. Never follow crowd blindly. Don't, don't just follow what is in what is you know in vogue. Those who put those things there to call, to say oh, they are in vogue, they are human beings like yourself. Come up with your own creative idea also that can connect the world positively. Don't just take everything because it is introduced to you or because it is in existence or it is in world. Ask questions. Check the background, you know, trait of that thing. Ask yourself, what is it going to give to me? Sit down and think before you embrace anything. Don't be lost in the crowd. Make a crowd yourself. Whoever does it well that you admire, he's only telling you, giving you a signal that you can reproduce. You can also do something better. Don't begin to see yourself as, oh, everything that is made is good for you. When your word is waiting for what is good from you. I go to the next one. Maintaining identity. We have been told so much about, you must have an identity. It is people that don't have identity that give it easily. You take everything that comes your way. You think everything people share with you is the idea. Even though you have these friends, you cherish them, you appreciate them, you think their own value is better than your own value. And then they come to introduce all sorts of things to you. You think you should drop your own value and embrace their own. You are only promoting, you know, their own value, their family value, and everyone you are rejecting your own. Is that what you are made for? 
every point that you come across in life have something that is coming with. You have your own, they have their own. Who drops for who? Are you dropping your own value because you feel your own is useless and then that one is the one that is good? Because you are just infatuation, you are just attracted to it. And then you embrace it and later realize, oh, you embrace something killing and there is no way out of it again. Don't let any, but I, I always say, you don't ask me. That was what guided my youth life, my, ch my, my, my childhood life. I am willing, I may be ready to drop anything for anybody. But let me see the reason why I have to drop what I have to take what you are giving me. If I'm not ready to prove the reason why my own is less superior than your own, then don't even bother to come here and ask me to drop it. But the point with our younger generation is that you think what everybody introduces to you is better than what you have. Who says? Says who? Because they are going in a way that you are not going, you think their way is, is, is the option. Whereas they are, admiring, are admiring, they are admiring you the way you are, you just don't know. But because they know you can't drop what you have, they want to talk, talk you away from what you have and give you what they have that is not long lasting. And it's not, it can never celebrate. Celebrate your future, celebrate your person. It's rather reduce you. Everybody has something to offer. Who chickens out? Are you going to drop your own? You do you chicken out because you feel somebody is bringing. What makes that person greater and better than you? And what is giving you the impression that what they are giving you and bringing to you that you are adopting are better and superior than what you have? That you cannot be proud to share what you have. Do not abuse anyone in your lifetime. The fact that you don't know the perspective they are talking from, you don't know what they are coming with, does not mean they are subjected to abuse from you. You may not share their opinion. You, know, you may not buy into what they believe in. But leave them. They are human beings that have opinions like you. And they have the right to do whatever they want to do. But if you have something that you feel you want to share and it's superior, be ready to defend it. And don't force anybody to buy into your opinion without doing the necessary things. If you think it's a good opinion and it's a good thing that you want your friend to take, and they are not seeing it from your angle, you have, that, like Shokwe said, God makes things happen, and you are made in the image of God. Go the way of God to make things happen in the life of that person. Even if you are seeing what is not good in the life of that person, like all of you know, our youth now, you take to internet, you take to you start abusing people, abusing your grandfather, abusing your great grandfather, abusing people that are older than you because you think you have access to device. Is that value? Where is that originating from? You can cause somebody's attention to what is going on that you, you think is not right, and you give the person opportunity to probably explain, or you walk up to the person. It's not everything that you expose people to ridicule and shame, and you begin to talk. And you are not people say that keeps his tongue, keeps his life. You open your mouth and you just feel you can talk to anybody. Hey, life is not like that. Life is much more precious than that. Some people talk their destiny and their treasure away from their life by being just careless with the words of their mouth. You are abusing, you are criticizing great-grandfather. If for the age, because I mean, it takes somebody to have lost a heart of, you know, being virtuous, being respectful, being probably even a normal human being, to see somebody that is as old as your grandfather, and you take to here and you begin to abuse the person and you begin to talk to the person. You, you, we are not saying don't correct. You have the right to correct anybody. But even correcting adults <clears throat> calls for wisdom of God. Because what you do today is coming back. You may say, hey, I'm not going to tow their line, so they, it will not come back to me their way. It may be that line that you will tow, that somebody will see it as very, very hard and very, very, very disheartening and will take you up, even though you think it is the right, the right, right path. Everybody will not agree with you. Somebody that will not agree with you at a time, will you be proud if that person takes to the street and begins to tear you into pieces? Young adult, build your future. Build your life. Walk up to adults. Ask questions. Pray for them if necessary. If you don't believe in prayer, do whatever you can do to get connected to them. Ask your questions. Clear your doubts. Find out the common things between the people that are around you and use that to connect with them. 
you are in a strange land, you are in a, in a, in a, in a country different from your own, or probably you are even born here, and you are in a confusion, you don't know where you belong, your parents are coming up with some virtues and values, and you are in a system that is probably saying something different, and it's like you are in a, we understand all of those. It's, it's bound to happen, and that is how I really feel, and that's why I, I, I'm a bit like on the reserve res, side. When adults begin to take to, and you know, they begin to just, you know, talk to the young ones, the youth anyhow, and they begin to crucify them. And we, we, you know, sometimes they talk out of concern, but we all probably need to change our strategy because the world that you are in today, we have never been there. But again, let's find a common ground. Whatever is good is good. Nothing that is good can ever, can ever have another face to it as bad. If it is not good, it is not good. If it is good, it is good. And when you are doing something that is good, you know it is good. When you are doing something that is not good, you know it is not good. You can't deprive yourself of telling yourself a lie. Um, you can't deprive yourself of the knowledge of the fact that you know you are telling yourself a lie. If you are lying. Even though the next person may not know is a lie. Try to connect. Appreciate the angle to connect to people. Appreciate people for who they are. You know, bringing out the virtue in people, and from the virtue angle, relate with them. And by if if you are so led to relate with them anyway, and if you now have something to pass across, or, or God just want to bless you through them, let it be from you know, identifying where to connect with them. You don't get people's attention by being insultive to them. You scare them away. Even if they have anything good to give you, <laughs> they would rather allow that thing to waste than giving it to somebody that will insult them. And Randy, now let's quickly go through this. I love this um, <laughs> um, um, note value, our currency value, you know, um, story that is really, really very interesting. Two important lessons that we should all learn from this note. I know some of us might have come across it, and it may be the first time you are hearing it here, but let's take it. Let's, let, let's take the value we want to get from here. Okay? Let's say we are holding the, this value. Somebody is a story from somebody, and we just want to learn from it. $100 a note, right? Okay, let's go. It happened some time ago that I was in an audience listening to a motivational speaker. The speaker got out his wallet and pulled out a $100 note. Uh, sorry, hundred dollar notes. Don't mind me. Holding it up, he asked, "Who wants this?" Hundred dollar notes. Lots of ants went up, including mine. A slow chorus began to build as people began to shout, "Me, me!" I began to wonder who the lucky one will be. Who the speaker will choose to have the notes? And then it goes on. As I also certainly wondered, and I'm sure others did too, why he would simply give away $100. Even as the shouts of I want it grew louder, I noticed a young woman running down the castle and she ran up onto the stage, went up to the speaker and grabbed the $100 from his hand. Well done, young lady, said the speaker into the microphone. The speaker simply said, most of us just sit and wait for good things to happen. We don't make them happen. That's of no use. You've got to make things happen. Wherever you are, you are not a mistake. You find yourself outside the country, you are not a mistake. Your role outside that country that is meant for you, another person cannot take unless you let it out. There is a specific reason for your existence. There is a vacuum you must fill. There is assignment upon your life you must identify. You are not a mistake. You are not by chance. And you should not be careless about your person. Make a move. Simply thinking about doing something is of no use and not good enough. Our lives are like that in most cases. We are just thinking and wishing. Have you been so thoughtful to say, how do I make a difference? What do I do differently? How do I impact my generation? Fine. You are in a medical school. You are tending towards being a doctor. Have you ever sat down to say, how do I be 
How do I make myself a doctor with a difference? How do I make myself a researcher with a difference? How do I make myself a lecturer with a difference? How do I make myself a... Com How do you make yourself that professional with a difference? Do you just want to join them? Are you in that profession because of the prestige it carries? Life is more than that. Life is good when it influences. Life is good when, it's in, when it is impactful. Everybody that has come to this world 100 years back are no longer in existence. One day we will also be all gone. What are you dreaming will be remembered of you? Whatever is going to be remembered of you, see, I mean, still has a long way of its process for you to start thinking about it now and start doing it now. Make a move. Simply thinking about doing something is of no use and not good enough. We all see opportunities all around us, but instead of you know, maximizing the opportunity to bring out our best, we allow the opportunities to, to, to either mar us or make, the, <laughs> or, 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 or make the worst out of us. We all want the good things, but the problem is we don't take action. We're waiting for somebody to take an action that we can even take better. And when that person takes it in the wrong way, we take to criticism. The generation that we are in now is a generation that is scary. And that is why I feel sorrowful for us adults. They're so bad, so ugly for us. The generation that we are criticizing and crying about today is, is the generation that we have produced. <laughs> no excuse. You are not excusable. Generation that we are all thinking are giving us a headache now. This is how far, how good we are. But dear youngsters, dear youth outside there, if our own that we are claiming to be so good generation has produced the generation that is this, can come warm and cancerous, except for few ones of you, or so many of you anyway, it's not everybody, but in terms, I'm talking in terms of generation, not even youth now. Generation that is like a bit aching. If this is what we have produced, please, what generation are you aiming to produce? That's why some of us, that's why so many people, that's why we are also talking with you and we're thinking together, what can we do to still make it better? What can we do not to completely let go this generation to what is not um, pleasing to us? There are a lot of you that are wonderful there. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, all youth are wonderful. You are good. You are good species. You are good. You are good foundation for us. You are good, you know, um, personalities that can be explored for great achievement and great, you know, um, attainment for us, if only we know how to connect with you. And that is why we're asking, how do we connect with you? If we detach ourselves from you, we will do ourselves a lot of harm. And that is why we are connecting. We can't serve you without your input. How do we connect with you? So in our way, we are trying to rub it on you that you have better opportunities than we had. But all these opportunities that you have, make the best of it to prove that it can be better and that your world has a lot to offer. We all, we all want the good things of life, but the problem is who takes action? And the challenge today is ambassadorial responsibility. Take action, maximizing opportunity to the best, not only to your best, but to the best of your world. We all want the $100 notes and offer, but we don't make the move. We look at it longingly, but to get up and do something about it, we sit back and we are waiting for when it will, it will come and meet us where we are. No, in most cases or sometimes, it may require that you get up from where you are and you catch up with it. $100 note, that's one lesson. The other lesson, later the speaker got another $100 and held it up for all to see. I thought I knew what's up, but it just asks a simple question. How much is this worth? 
100 dollars the crowd yelled in unison right said the speaker he then took the note and crumpled it into a ball and asked how much is it worth now 100 dollars screamed the audience and then it goes on he threw the note on the ground stamped all over it and picked it up and asked one more time how much is it worth now and the response is still $100. I want you to remember this. And that is the lesson. The speaker said, just because someone crumples it or stamps on it, the value of the note does not diminish. We should all be like $100 notes. You are worth more than $100 notes. You are worth more than money can buy. Don't give up your worth because of opportunities or challenges. Always retain your value if you do have one. Opportunities you have, you have outside your home country is not to damage you. It's not to make you to be an headache for yourself or even a headache to your environment. It's not for you to rubbish your family, rubbish your background. It's not for you to jeopardize your future. It's to add value to you. It's to expand you. It's to make you, it's to make you explorative and informed. It's to make you versatile and useful. It's not to make you to become like a thorn in the flesh. You must be a blessing to everybody that comes around you. It doesn't really matter. You may not please everybody, but do your best to make sure at least that good is defined in your personality, that you are a good person. That you are a good person. Like Tommy said, uh, you know, just be good. Let everybody around you, you know, feel your best. And be prone to corrections, ask questions, seek counsel when it is needful. So many young ones are committing a, a suicide today. They are living in their world and they are taking terrible decisions without people around them knowing, simply because they just decide to live in their own world and they think whatever they are going through is the end of the world. They, you know, let me tell you something. This is a secret, Odin. If there is nothing good, great, about to happen with your life and your destiny, you won't be faced with the challenges and the battles of life that you are in now that you think the whole world wants to crumble on you. It is because you are a special species. You are a special, you know, breed. So the whole thing is just like they don't want you to happen. And you must tell yourself, I will work, I will happen. <laughs> if I can borrow you. Everything you are going through, those things are not to damage you. Like Tommy said, facing challenges, they are to draw you closer to god they are to make you think very well they are to make you to be very thoughtful they are to make you to be very good to yourself okay always retain your value if you have one you are a bundle of value no 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 country no setting no situation no circumstances should make you to be less of your value and that is all i have to say today and that is just my talk to you you can stand out to be the different person it doesn't matter how many people are following you you can single yourself out and stand it out you don't have to follow the crowd if it is not worth it but if it is worth it let's go if it's not worth it i stand out and your word is waiting to celebrate you just be thoughtful and decide to stand out Make the difference that it requires. And it is worth. Thank you.